So today we're continuing our discussion on fasting, and now we're going to talk about fasting and gut health, how it can improve your microbiome, reduce adverse gut symptoms like gas and bloating, diarrhea, constipation, and also just overall help your metabolic flexibility so that you have reduced chronic disease. So stay tuned to learn more about fasting and gut health. So today we're continuing our discussion on fasting. Last week we talked last week we talked about fasting and brain health. Today we're going to be talking about fasting and gut health and how fasting can re- improve our mi- microbiome, reduce bad gut symptoms that I see a lot in my patients. Um, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, and how it can reduce your risk for chronic disease and also um, provide weight loss. But I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. If you're new to me, welcome. I um, have videos that I produce here every Thursday, and we help motivated women and men reduce their fatigue, reclaim their health, reclaim their energy, vitality, and rediscover the magic of feeling well. And if you're not new to me, welcome back. Thanks so much for coming back. Remember to subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when I post videos every Thursday, and like and share this video if you enjoy it. So fasting and gut health. I see many patients, lots of patients with gut health issues. And that's one of the main drivers that brings people into my functional medicine practice. So it's a really relevant topic. And fasting is a very um, beneficial way to help your gut. And it's also really trendy right now. So it's a good thing to talk about because people are asking about it and they want to learn more about it. So in my last video, I talked about what fasting was. I've covered it in several other videos, so I'm not going to go into that again. So there's fasting and there's time-restricted eating. I'm kind of using that word, those words interchangeably today. So let's talk about fasting and time-restricted eating and how they can help your digestive health. So to be healthy, we need to be metabolically flexible. Our bodies need to know and our brains need to know when we can um, transition from using fat for fuel to glucose for fuel. And so then we have to have periods of fasting to be able to be more metabolically flexible. The ketogenic diet can help with that too. And caveat, um, remember I am a doctor, I'm not your doctor. So always, if you're making any of these changes with fasting or ketogenic diet or anything that I've talked about on my channel to discuss it with your healthcare provider for your safety. So um, when we fast at night, we, uh, and we fast for an extended period of time, usually over 12 hours, the more, the better, as long as you feel okay on it, then, um, we become more metabolically flexible when we eat at night, then we disrupt our circadian rhythm and that can disrupt our microbiome, our Bacteria in our microbiome also have their own circadian rhythm. So we don't want to be eating at night. And even when we are working like the graveyard shift or you're doing some kind of job or travel, jet lag, that kind of thing that disrupts our circadian rhythm, that can also disrupt our microbiome. So our microbiome is very on track with our circadian rhythm. And if we also, if we eat at night, we have these altered schedules of working night shifts or traveling a lot with jet lag, we can also increase our blood sugar, our hemoglobin A1C, which is our average blood sugar over the last three months, and um, adversely affect the way our body responds to insulin. So become more insulin resistant, therefore leading to diabetes. Um, So we want our circadian rhythm to be intact. So that, like we said before with the, in the last video, um, as when that's not intact, when we're not having periods of fasting, we have advanced aging in our brain and our cells. Our gut microbiome also acts up and we can get what we call dysbiosis, which we talk a lot about in my practice, where you're adverse or you're not necessarily adverse. They're not adverse when they're in balance with our good gut bacteria, but certain gut bacteria can become out of balance and take over. And that can affect our digestion that can cause more gas and bloating and cause diarrhea and constipation also can cause fatigue. And I'm going to talk about that more in another video. So, uh, for example, they've done studies with one of our gut bacteria called Enterobacter, which when it is out, out of balance or dysbiotic, it can then affect our melatonin and um, also just disru- disrupt our circadian rhythm. And then it can also lead to, and it's a very sensitive to melatonin. So when melatonin's out of whack, circadian rhythm is out of whack, 
it then can adversely affect the enterobacter. And then when the enterobacter is not in balance, it can cause gas and bloating and can um, just take over and kind of suppress our good bacteria. So this is one example. So we really want to be in a normal eating rhythm, even when we travel. So for example, if you're going out of your time zone, way out of your time zone, try to stick with your normal eating rhythm to keep the microbiome well in balance. So they've done studies with um, digestion and the microbiome with mice. And when um, the mice were uh, on a time-restricted eating, they had a better microbiome. When they are allowed to um, eat anytime they wanted with the same exact diet, the same exact calories, when they were allowed to eat anytime they wanted, that led to a more obese type of microbiome. And that you, there's been studies, and I can put some references down below on these, where when they've done um, the stool... Uh, why am I blanking on the word? When they take um, samples of people's stools and replace them into other people's uh, gut for like, for example, Clostridium difficile infections, when they do stool transplants, I think what I'm trying to say, they if they take it from an obese person and put it into a thin person, that thin person can then become obese. So the microbiome can very much control our metabolism. So in these studies, they're when the uh, mice were uh, allowed to eat anytime they want the same diet, they then um, took on a obese type microbiome. Also, when we um, do, when we practice fasting or time restricted eating, we reduce inflammation in our gut. So I have a lot of patients that come in that are just really inflamed in their gut. And when we do like a certain cleanse or, um, uh, bone, sometimes a collagen or bone broth, if they're not vegetarians like myself, uh, diet for a few days that can reset that inflammatory cascade and reduce it. And then they have better gut symptoms. Also, when we practice fasting and time restricted eating, we have increased, increased microbial diversity, meaning we have a better microbiome, like I have said throughout the video. So we have a better balance in our microbiome. We reduce our gut permeability. We have less leaky gut. And then I'll attach, I mean, I will put up here somewhere, um, a link to a video where I talked about leaky gut and how to reset a leaky gut. But one way is to, to practice fasting and time restricted eating, because that can help, uh, to repair the leaky gut or gut then doesn't let all these things come through that then trigger other things like inflammation, autoimmune disease, all the bad, uh, symptoms, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, all the bad gut symptoms and small intestinal and bacterial overgrowth. So it can help our gut permeability. Also, um, practicing fasting or time-restricted eating improves our metabolism. So a lot of us are struggling when our hormones change, our metabolism changes. So getting into this rhythm with a good circadian rhythm on our eating can then um, improve our metabolism. And then the added bonus that we see a lot of times with uh, fasting and time-restricted eating is weight loss. Even just like with the mice, even when people are eating the same foods and just eating them in a time-restricted way, they can have weight loss. When we have weight loss, a lot of times we can then have a reduced risk for diabetes also. We can improve our gut microbiome, so it kind of cascades into all of these other benefits. Another benefit I want to talk about is when we practice time-restricted eating or fasting, our pathways that detoxify are less congested. Our body, our liver, our detoxification pathways are not focusing on digestion, digesting a big heavy meal. They're allowed to put all their energy towards getting those toxins that we may have accumulated from our environment, from our food, from our water out. So we give more energy to that liver to detoxify the toxins. And then we get a better um, overall you know, less inflammation, we have less of the the problems from the toxins because the toxins can really get in the way of our vitamins and our minerals. So we have better vitamin and mineral uh, levels in our body and that cascades into so many other organs. So when we don't congest our detox pathways with heavy meals at night and, you know, just constantly having to digest, we then are free to detoxify. And we'll talk more about detoxification on this channel. I have talked about it before, but it is a fascinating process. So we might as well make that process easier 
by practicing really what our ancestors did, what animals do by restricting the amount of time that we eat. But again, always make sure it's safe for you. So I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Thanks for joining me. Remember to subscribe, like, share. In the description down below, I have access, I give you access to PDFs that then support all the material that we talk about here. So you don't have to take notes. There's benefit, there's um, PDFs on the benefits of the mitochondria. There's going to be information on fasting there, information on weight loss, the ketogenic diet. So really join our email list, check out those PDFs. And then when you do that, you will have access to our full script um, online dispensary of um of vitamins and minerals and supplements that are approved by me and other functional medicine doctors. They're really doctor quality and you'll get a discount there too. So leave uh, your information. If you go to drshellymeyer.com, I'll flash that here. You can get those PDFs and get that discount. And then also in the description down below, I have some links on some products that help, help, um, maintain fasting, but they don't take the place of fasting. Um, some powders that can be used while you're fasting to help improve the effects. And those have been tried and true by my patients and myself. And I really believe in those products. So thanks for joining me today. Check out my social media links, check out my blog, check out my practice. I'm a, I have virtual functional medicine in Colorado, as well as uh, membership programs within functional medicine face-to-face. -face. And we really help patients with their gut health and brain health and vitality. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you next Thursday.